Hello there from DIFR. So, we have a visitor on campus, Professor Jocelyn Bell Burnell, most famously known for her discovery of pulsars way back in the 1960s. So, Professor Bell is going to give us a colloquium here on the discovery of pulsars and a public lecture on how gold and other elements are formed in stars. So, of course, do come to the colloquium to find out more about that. But Professor Bell Burnell is also known for promoting students, and women in particular, to take up science as a career. So, um, if I may ask you, you know, certainly looking at TIFR today, there are certainly more women than there were in your days, but what would you really suggest? How could we get more people interested in science, especially women? Yes, and we need to get more women because we need a greater diversity in our research groups. We've learnt in Britain that the strongest research group contains a variety of people, men and women and people from all sorts of backgrounds. And they each approach the question from different ways. And that makes a research group more creative, more flexible, more robust. So it is important to do it for that reason, if nothing else. Once you get a, a critical mass of women in an area, more and more will join. And so we see already certain areas where there are plenty of women, at least at the younger level. There's another issue about why they don't percolate through to the very top level. Women are always helped by good teaching at the lower levels. Again, we have discovered that if, particularly in physics, there is bad teaching, everybody suffers, but women suffer more. If there's good teaching, everybody benefits but women benefit more. So one of the important things is to have good teaching at the lower levels if you want to get more people at the TIFR sort of level. Uh, another very helpful thing is to have mentors and to have role models visible. And even if you don't have role models visible in person, you can have pictures of women scientists around the place so that the younger women feel they belong there. That's perhaps the most important thing to do. If I may ask you another question. So, uh, astronomy is a subject which really isn't particularly uh, the most popular choice these days. Um, though there is so much, I would guess, that we still have to learn about the universe. So, how do you, you know, suggest that astronomy outreach, I mean, there is certainly night sky observations and things like that, which are targeted more at an amateur astronomer yeah. level. But how do we get grad students interested in astronomy particularly as a choice? Curiously, we find in Britain that there are actually, there's a lot of interest in astronomy and particle physics. Those are the two things that students really want to do and that's what brings them into science. Uh, I think it's quite important to popularise astronomy, at least in our context, because it draws people towards science and then maybe they go into useful areas like engineering or science. I think astronomy is on the threshold of several major developments which will percolate way beyond astronomy, will affect our whole physics understanding and probably revise the whole way we think about the universe. There are so many major things like gravitational radiation, which will probably be detected very soon, transient objects which we're just beginning to get a grip with and then there's dark energy and dark matter where we have very little understanding of what these things are and they make up about 95% of the universe. It seems to me that subjects go in waves as an era of major discoveries and it's quiet for a bit Then there's another era of major discoveries and the subject emerges again totally different for another Palmer spell, and I think we're on the verge of one of those major, major revolutions.